There are Minecraft apps for iOS devices and there's video game versions, but what we're going to use is the, is the full laptop version. And so if you don't have a laptop, hang out with somebody who does because then you'll be able to um, kind of play along with them. If you're thinking of using this kind of game and what I'm going to show you with students, it's going to require computers. But that's not to say you can't use the light version which is available for iOS. This site that I have up here is um, where all, my, all the resources are and you'll be able to go back to this and this isn't going anywhere. The idea being um, most important is that you can get to this site and then if you have a laptop you're actually going to want to follow these directions that are at the top because if you have Mac OS or Windows we're gonna play Minecraft like in about 20 minutes, I hope. So we want to get in there and play around with it so that you get a better experience of what it is I'm trying to describe um, to you that is something you would do with your students. So you would download whichever one of those and follow these instructions right here. But if it doesn't work and if you're not totally sure, don't stress out because I don't want you to miss on the content of what we're going to cover. So my name is Diane Main, oh, and I should not touch the microphone. My name is Diane Main, and I am Assistant Director of Instructional Technology at the Harker School in San Jose. That is my son, Cameron. He's a fourth grader. Um, if you want to know about Minecraft, you ask a fourth grader. That's kind of <laughs> how this works. Now, actually, I've taught him a lot of stuff about Minecraft. He didn't already know, but he has now since um, learned how to do a lot of stuff in Minecraft, and he likes to play. But when we go into the education version of Minecraft that we're going to use, my son and I will be in as teachers and you all will be in as students uh, so that we can demonstrate for you what it is that the teacher can do in this particular version of Minecraft. Um, and the way I've set it up is the, um, the little server of Minecraft I'm actually running from the laptop right now is running the exact same version as what these downloads will, will give you. So you're going to have a version of the um, software that works for what I'm going to be having you use. There's a whole lot of other stuff you could get to know about Minecraft that would bog you down if you focused on it first, so we're just not going to talk about it for now. Okay? We're going to get to where we see the value of the tool um, as, a, as a way that we can interact with students before we worry about any of that weird stuff. All right, so what we're going to do is I have these slides, and uh, like I said, I'm not going to read them to you, but there are a few things on here. Let's give it a second to wake up. There's a few things on here I do want to show you. All right. So uh, I, I introduced myself and my son. These are different versions of little people that you could look like in Minecraft. You'll notice that, first of all, most people aren't this customized. And even then, they still look like really blocky Lego people. And that's, I don't know if that's part of the appeal or if that's how they keep the game running on more computers than only the ones that have super high-end graphics cards. but. It's also kind of cute. So you will see blocky people like this. So first, what is Minecraft? How many people have heard of Minecraft? You must have, because you came here, so you're like, I've heard of it. How many people know what it is? OK, and so the rest of you are like, I keep hearing about this. What is it? And why are, is this whole one age demographic super into it? So um, this, this quote is from Minecraft's homepage. And I'm going to show you their little video, it's real quick, about what Minecraft is. F to do that, I'm going to need to go to their page because it's just a, a screenshot of the video. But there's a, you'll see throughout the slides there's links that I'm not going to go to. Those are your resources for later if you're interested. But let me come out of this and show you what Minecraft says about Minecraft. Let's go to a place where everything is made of blocks where the only limit is your imagination. Let's go wherever you want to go. Climb the tallest mountains. Venture down to the darkest caves. 
build anything you want. Day or night, rain or shine. Because this is the most significant sandbox you'll ever set foot in. Build a majestic castle. Invent a new machine. Or take a ride on a roller coaster. Play with friends. Build your own little community. Protect yourself with the strongest armor that you can craft. And fight off the dangers of the night. No one can tell you what you can or cannot do. With no rules to follow. This adventure, it's up to you. So I have a question for you. What did you notice? Oops, sorry. You're not going to get a chance to notice again. Sorry about that. What did you notice? No limitations. No limitations. Your imagination. No rules, your imagination. Creativity. Okay. <coughs> so there was even a sort of dig at, I don't know, traditional education. Mm -hmm. No one can tell you what you can or can't do. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, so does that sound like school? Is that what we, we, we give kids all these opportunities in school, tr traditionally, typically, probably not at this school, it already uh, strikes me as a place that's pretty cool to be a kid, but that's not what happens when kids go to school, right? The opposite happens. This is where you will sit, this is what you will read, this is what you will like, this is what you will say when you write things, right? We don't even give them a chance to have opinions sometimes. And it's not that that's what we want, it's that that's sort of that box we've been forced into. So Minecraft, just on the surface, appeals to kids. Why? Because they get to do all that stuff. Did you notice anything about not just the message, but what you saw visually? What did you see visually? What did you notice? Did anybody notice that sunrise? Yeah. It looked even better on my screen. Um, the sunrise and the sunset are beautiful in Minecraft. The phases of the moon, if you stay up through the nights and work, you will see it goes through the phases of the moon correctly. F the laws of physics sometimes work the way you expect them to. You will see things that are built up on nothing and they're just in the sky and you're like, uh, that wouldn't work in the real world, which is cool. But then if you drop something, it falls. So you can do a lot with you know, application of certain concepts in a game kids are already in. And what's really cool about it is if you were to ask kids, they would say, like, things look really cool. Did you know that you could, there's a, a wild wolf running around? You can feed it and use a bone to tame it, and then you can even change the color of its bandana, and you can use the bone to make it sit, and it will wait there for you forever. No kid has a dog that does that. So, <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, if a kid doesn't like dogs or if they're allergic, they can have a pet, right? You can also do that with um, cats, but it's a little harder. The cats, believe it or not, are more fickle. So... There's all these opportunities to do all these fun things, just like school. Okay. So then Minecraft EDU, without getting too deep into what happens when you're using Minecraft, Minecraft is a game that was created to be an open sandbox. Th you, you can have things set up where there's a linear progression, but for the most part it is very nonlinear. And st all the kids have to do, or anybody playing it, when they go in, unless they're in creative mode and nothing can ever hurt them, if you go in in like a normal survival mode, you have to survive your first night. And the, to survive your first night, you have to build a shelter. But to build a shelter, you need to get materials. And to get materials, you have to maybe cut down trees or dig for dirt or do different things. So you're going to need tools. So there's all these cause and effect and, and things that are somewhat linear, but you don't have to do that. You could get killed by creepers and zombies your first night. It's totally your choice. Um, by the way, this is what this is. There's a creeper. And they're actually the bad guys, but they're so cool. And my son has a creeper on his shirt. That's more what they look like in the game. This is like an artist rendering. Um, but there's this whole culture around like the, the bad guys and the, the stuff you have to defeat. And there's YouTube videos and there's music parodies and there's all kinds of fun stuff. There's a whole culture that kids have built around this thing that they have on ownership of. So you're playing the game and then people do what's called modding the game. They, they create mods, modifications. Minecraft EDU is a mod, and it's a mod that was created so that I can go in as the teacher and I have a special dashboard. And if I'm the teacher and I'm in with my students, which is what we're gonna try later, um, I can, let's say I need you guys to chill out and listen for a minute, I can freeze you all. I can mute you all, because there's an in-game uh, chat. And then if I mute you, then you can't do that. I can teleport myself to you, or I can teleport all of you to me, or just you to me, or you and then you and then you to where I am. 
So I have some powers in the game if I'm in as the teacher that are not normally available in the game. I can also give whatever materials I want. Let's say I want to give everybody 30 torches, or maybe I just need to give you a diamond shovel. I can do that as the teacher. And then also, since we're in creative mode and I'm the teacher, I can, I can just conjure up whatever I need. So if a kid says they're building something and we don't want to take a ton of time with all that acquisition of materials, I can leave a chest outside their house for the kid with all the stuff they need. So we did that in a high school class that I was teaching recently. So there's a lot of links here because I could never do justice to try and explain Minecraft EDU to you. I will show you what it looks like when we play, so you'll see how mine is a little bit different from yours if you're in the game with us. But this is their website. Here are three people's um, YouTube channels that you really want to go and take a look at if this is something you're interested in, especially this guy, Stephen Elford in Australia. He's doing amazing things using Minecraft as the, as the platform for his... Um, he has um, a numeracy class, basically, that is math for kids that have checked out. But they still need to, you know, balance a budget, write checks, be able to do things as adults in this world. So he has this whole world in which there's an economy and they have to earn things and their behavior in class translates into pay bonuses and deductions and things like that in the game. And then here's some other names of folks and you can actually find these people at this Minecraft Teachers Google group. So I'm leaving that there for you to go. You, you know, if you really get into this, you've got homework. That's just how it is. But it's going to be the most fun homework you've ever done. So at least I think so. So those are all just resources you can get to from here. In fact, John Miller and Chris Scott and I are doing a three-hour workshop on Minecraft EDU at Fall Q uh, late in the next month, about a month from now. Um, and that's going to be hands-on. Again, it's going to be laptops. You, you're welcome to bring an iPad, but you're going to want to have a laptop or, or something with you. Okay. So... Before we jump in and start playing, <laughs> if you love this and you want to do it, you're going to have to justify it. Am I right? So uh, especially if you're in a place where explicit direction instruction is, is the norm, you're going to have to really justify why <laughs> we should do things differently. So there's a guy at Julia Morgan School for Girls named Eamon O'Brien, and he has put together this great Prezi in which you will see the names of the people who've done the research, and you will see summaries of the things that they have found about why video games in class, or, or just for class, are a really amazing way to increase engagement. First of all, most of the kids you know are likely playing video games anyway. In fact, many of you are, pl are probably playing video games. Some of you may be doing it right now. I can't tell what you're doing on your screens. <laughs> uh, but you know, your words with friend, or draw something, or candy crush friends, or whatever. Something's going to pop up. We game. It's what we do. Why do we game? There's a lot of reasons why we game right? Something I have control over in my life. Or I, I'm competitive and, and it's fun for me to kind of get out that stress from work by doing some com something competitive. Yeah, how does that feel for kids, right? Not only do they have all the stress, stress from school, but they're not in charge. They're not making money and can decide which car to buy or where they're going to live, right? So games are a great release, but also there's a lot of learning that happens. Decision making, problem solving, collaboration. Okay, there's, there's a lot of things that can happen in games, and Eamon covers a lot of that in this Prezi. So th that's a whole presentation unto itself. And he's not here to explain the stuff that I don't remember what he said, so it's there so that you can use that and start. It's like a springboard for you to go find research that's going to help you. Um, there's a cool um, article from this Media Psychology Review that also addresses this, you know, gaming in education situation. But more to the point, I want to refer you to this idea of flow. How many people have gotten a master's degree in education and therefore have heard of this? Um, or how many people have read about or heard about this concept of flow as it pertains to when you're in the act of doing something? A few of you, I saw a few hands. So this idea of flow, there's a, there's a visual on another screen that's going to uh, help with that. But uh, this is a concept that has been pioneered by Chiksamahai, which that's how you say it. So if you're at a party and you want to you know, use that master's degree, this is how you say it, Chiksamahai. It's a very long name. And it doesn't look anything like it, right? So let's take a look at what that concept of flow looks like when we illustrate it. We'll come back a little bit. This is this, is this idea of flow. So your students are in your class with you. They either have the skills you need them to have or they don't, somewhere on that spectrum. You've got kids that, that come in lacking every skill that you need them to have. And you've got kids that already have all those skills. And that's part of the reason why if we teach everybody the same thing, it gets really frustrating fast. So there's this skill level continuum. Oh, this sucker's dying. Sad. For down here. Yeah, there you go. And then there's also this level of challenge. 
So if I have no skill in an area, and I also am not being challenged, I don't care. The direct opposite is, I've got a lot of skill, and, my, and whoever has got me doing stuff is challenging me. And I get to that point where I just can't put it down. That may happen with a book you're reading. You get to the end and you, you're glad it got resolved, but you can't wait to read something else by that same person because you were immersed in it. You, you, you forgot everything else, right? Some of you have had that experience while you're playing a game or maybe even doing work, but it's work that you enjoy so much, it doesn't feel like work. So that's what's happening at the other end of the spectrum. But look at some of these other emotions that take place. When we're not at I don't care and we're not at, sorry, were you talking to me? We're somewhere in this other area. I don't have much skill, but I am being challenged a great deal. Now, fear is, is preventing me from learning. Fear might even be preventing me from speaking or even hearing properly, because in some people, anxiety does uh, shut down some of those modalities. Let's say I've got lots of skill, but you're not challenging me. I'm just chilling out. I'm not, I'm, I'm not feeling like I don't care, but I'm like, I got this. But then at some point, you're not going to care anymore, because I'm not learning anything. I'm not getting anything out of this. So there's all these emotions that can happen, but what we're going for is flow. And how does that relate to this? Because surviving your first night in Minecraft isn't simple. Or if you play in such a situation, which we're going to try, we're going to see which one of those colors and emotions pertains to your feelings in a few minutes. Um, you, uh, oh, I lost my thought, so we'll just go on. But you get the idea. We, we want to be challenged, but at the same time, we don't want to be stressed out. Okay, so that's, that's what flow has to do with it. Oh, so how, does game, how do games play into that? Games are a very non-threatening. Even if it's a competitive, it's a fun competitive where you can achieve that flow feeling even if you're not the typically successful student, right? So there's this great um, quote from uh, J James Paul G. who does a lot with gaming and education. And this was brought to me by John Miller. He brought this to my attention, but I put the emphasis here. They talk about, you know, yeah, we could, we could throw a ton of books at, at kids and it's not going to solve the problem. It's not always equity that's the issue. Yes, we might um, go and build libraries in places where they don't have them so that they get access to, to, the, to the materials they need, but just giving a kid a book and just giving a kid a game won't work. You need a reason. You need to uh, design experiences that they're going to have that make that meaningful for them, right? So again, you can read. I'm not going to read it to you. How many people have seen this visual before? Because we're, we're about to jump in. So where you are usually is your comfort zone, but nothing cool is happening there. You're there because it's non-threatening. You're there because it's, you can relax and you don't have to get too overstimulated. But that's not where the magic happens. The magic is happening way outside your comfort zone, which means <coughs> if you want to be part of it, you've got to step out. And for many of you, since we started out with a lot of people like, I've heard of Minecraft, but I don't think I've ever seen it. I don't know what it is, right? We're going to jump in, and, and as much as we can, we're going to... Uh, have people playing Minecraft. I see a bunch of laptops, but um, not everybody. So you may want to reconfigure where you're sitting to make sure that you can get where there's, uh, where there's uh, somebody using Minecraft. So these links will take you to, the links on the screen will take you to some things that are happening, collaborative activities. Um, the Wonderful World of Humanities is something that if you downloaded those things at the beginning, and you can download them from home later if you, if you didn't bring a computer with you, um, you can go into, on my Harker Minecraft server, you can go into the wonderful world of humanities and experience what that looks like. It's pretty awesome. Um, if you teach sixth or seventh grade history, you're going to just be desperate to get in there with your students, and if you teach world history as well. Um, it was created by a teacher at an American school in Kuwait who teaches a course called Humanities, which is a lot of the similar stuff to our 6th and 7th grade history standards in California. And he has created all these places, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, uh, Mesoamerica, Africa, India. And then you go and you interact with non-player characters, some of whom send you on quests. Like when you go to Mesoamerica, Cortez's ship is on fire just off the coast of the island where all the different Mesoamerican cultures are. And the Mesoamerican cultures and the European and yeah, Ibn, he keeps saying, and Ibn Battuta's ship. How many people know who Ibn Battuta is? I didn't until my son and I found him, and now my nine-year-old knows who Ibn Battuta is. So he was, he was actually an explorer who pioneered a lot of things that don't get mentioned. I have, I have my suspicions as to why that is. Um, and you, you could probably figure that out. But anyway, in the wonderful world of humanities, you can go and experience, because uh, the guy created it for his students, and then he released it as something anyone can download and use themselves in their own iteration of it. 
And so I can take my kids in there and they can go on quests and they can interact with Alexander the Great and Confucius and Confucius sends you on a quest to go get him five fresh lilies, which you, you have to kind of wander around the Confucian gardens and find. It's really fun. And it's, it's kind of like no pressure, but at the same time, there's all this information everywhere and you read, oh, okay. So the guy in Kuwait that's using it with his students hides these secret words and they get extra privileges in class when they find them. But it's like at the end of a five block piece of reading about Roman aqueducts or whatever, okay? So it's like sneaky learning. Uh, the US Capitol build is something, there's at Temple University, there's a guy who's really involved in Minecraft for education. And he is helping someone who's doing her doctoral thesis on the way we interact with um, online environments. So they had a US Capitol building that had been built and it looks really cool, but all the grounds and all the interior was not built. So a team of, I didn't do it. I, I was involved in some of the setup, but I didn't do it. Um, they're, they're furnishing the entire inside and then they did all the landscaping so it looks like the real Capitol building. Then they're gonna try to put in people who you go in and you talk to um, and interact with. And then Minecraft EDU, not the president. He's not at the Capitol building. So he's only nine, so he doesn't know all that stuff yet. Um, so Minecraft EDU Worlds is where you can go and get more things that other people have created. So you don't, have to, you don't have to feel like, oh, I have to know how to build all this stuff, okay? The other thing is, too, you can just have kids make what you need them to make. Question? Um, do most content areas have worlds already made? What you will probably find is that there is a lot of stuff out there, and it may not necessarily be with Minecraft EDU in mind. It's just built for Minecraft in general. You may find settings of novels that you teach where kids, or maybe, maybe adults, but they're usually better when the kids make them. Um, Set a setting of a novel you teach and then might even be some characters or you could take the setting and add characters if you learned how to do that little piece that's a little extra. Mm -hmm. This that we're looking at right here, we go to Minecraft and it's on there. How do you, that you're presenting? My slides? Yes, your slides. Just, they are um, on this site right here. Okay, thank you. So you can go to that. You and leave that up? Yeah, I'll leave that up for a few minutes. And the, the QR code is just the same. It oh. just takes you to the same site. Okay. Um, what you may find though, there, there's, there's a whole community of people who build in Minecraft and it's actually, you get some serious geek cred when you, when you can do this. My son is really into ships. It started with the Titanic and it branched out into the Bismarck and stuff like that. So he has, we've gone and found what people have already built. There's a Titanic build where it's the intact Titanic, the sinking Titanic and the sunken Titanic as it is now, all in one world and you can go to each one and explore. Uh, we found the Bismarck, did we, did we find the Bismarck? I'm trying to remember, and there was some other ships that you have too. Uh, an aircraft carrier, right? The Ticonderoga. We couldn't find the Hornet, which is local here in California, or the Queen Mary, but we found some things that are similar, okay? And he likes to go and explore them and then try to build some different things too. Are we good for me to continue on the slides? We're trying to find the one that was used. This is like almost frightening. That, so there was this Nazi propaganda Titanic movie that was done during World War II He's watched it in, on YouTube in German with uh, English subtitles. <laughs> and the ship that they used for the filming, we're trying to see if there's a Minecraft model of that ship because he wants to compare it to the Titanic. Um, so, so there's that. Um, it can spawn incredibly geeky children. Okay, so what we want to do, our goal here is that we can get in a world in Minecraft that I am running right now from this laptop. So you don't have to necessarily know all the mechanics what would be helpful for you is to see, is this gonna be worth it? Is this gonna be something I do with kids? Let's get in there and play. Because actually when you get in there and play, we have some interesting experiences that, that p teachers undergo. Well, newcomers, whether they're teachers or not. Um, so I'm checking on my time here. So what we wanna do is, there's a tutorial world. I, I use these same slides for a longer workshop, so we aren't gonna get to go into the world, world of humanities. However, if you download that stuff, you can go there. My, my uh, server is one that you can access from anywhere. Now, that having been said, in the second semester when I teach my class at school, I will probably be updating that server and the, the version I gave you won't work. But we're gonna go in. So this is what we do. First, in the background, I have running this. This just is a little program that is sharing on the wireless right here, this, at this address, this little world that's a tutorial for Minecraft EDU or it's, it's a Minecraft tutorial, but it's designed by the people at Minecraft EDU. We're gonna go in there, and in the world, you're gonna learn how to like move around, how to get places, how to interact with the world. So if you are at a laptop, we wanna make sure you can get there. So this is gonna require me to kind of check up on you, how, how you're doing. Starting from here, 
if you intend to play, did you follow these directions and download one of these? If not, we want to go back here and do that. So you should have a Minecraft EDU folder probably on your desktop. In there, there's a, there's a couple of different files, but you're going to need the start launcher.jar, which you just run. Now I'm going to run it as well because I'm going to get in the world with you. When I run that, it looks like this. You should get something like this that comes up on your screen. I'm going to minimize the things I don't need right now. Okay. Now yours probably does not have this server tool because if you were kids, what you would do is if I let you have that, this guy over here, he looks like the kind that would start his own world and then he would tell some of his friends to join him in there while the class is trying to work together in this other world. And they would be probably building amazing things or possibly doing something inappropriate. Children have been known to do that kind of thing. Um, so I took this piece out of what you have. We're going to do, you're going to start Minecraft EDU. And when you do, because I'm going to join you in the world as well, I'm just going to do one thing different. When you click on that start Minecraft EDU, it opens this little window. This part is a little confusing. We're actually going to be offline, despite the fact that you have to be online to use it. And we're, we're using a network. We're offline as opposed to in the bigger world of the whole internet where all kinds of Minecraft is happening that we don't want to see yet because we're really not ready for it. I don't even think I'm ready for it. I've never done that one. Okay, so offline is what we choose here when we choose login. So it's going to start a window and it's going to do some stuff and it's setting it up. Hopefully this is working at at least one or two computers per table where there are computers. And just like in a classroom that is a healthy classroom, without knocking over anything that looks expensive, move around if you need to. Go where the action is. Invite a friend to or a new friend to come sit with you. So when you get in here, he's like, I got this. Okay, so I'm going to go in as me. You can create a name for yourself. For today, it would help to use something that we could, you know, recognize you by. Like, it's similar to what's on your name tag. And you get to pick your gender. And then when you click on this, then you click continue. If you're, if you're not female, please click male. Or do whatever you want. You really don't have to stick with your identified gender. <laughs> so we want to get here, and then I'm going to stop until we get enough people here that we feel like, how we doing? So we're going to click multiplayer because there are many of us that are going to be in together. And when you click on multiplayer, you're actually going to see the temple server, which is, um, I believe, still the US Capitol build. You won't be able to go in as teachers, but you could probably explore. I'm not really sure, actually. Try it sometime, but not now. Um, this is where you could go to, to experience the wonderful world of humanities. Again, not right now. We're going to use this one called Direct Connect because we are going to connect to a specific IP address, and that is not what the IP address is, so let me change it. That IP address is up here in my little server tool. Okay? 10.60. So just so you know, in future, and for anybody following along at home, that will only work in this room today, that particular address. Okay? The reason is I am physically running it from this computer right now on the network that we're sharing. So what's good about that is that if I am in a class, which in a manner of speaking I am right now, if I'm in a class with my students, when we're in the room, I do write that on the board, and that's, that's the, that's the, we're, you know, we're in the room. No one else is going to know. Somebody down the hall, because we do have kids on laptops in the hallway sometimes gaming or outside in the gaming area, which we have a gaming area. Um, they're not going to know this unless, of course, one of my students texts the other one because I also don't ban cell phones in my class. But I say to the kids, all right, don't tell anybody about this right now because we're going to do a class project. You don't want somebody coming in and messing with it. So then we're going to hit join server. Okay? Is it okay for me to go on? All right. Now, you are a student. I am a teacher. I'm going to go in as a teacher so I can do special things. So I chose female, so it's giving me some options for my appearance. Right? And if you are male, your options look different if you, if you stated that you're a male. Okay? So there's lots of fun, different cultural peeps. Okay, there's like seven or eight. But I'm a teacher, so I don't actually get to choose my appearance unless I do some stuff I don't know how to do. So you're, you're a student. You're going to choose your appearance, and then you're going to hit connect. I'm a teacher, so I have a special password. 
that my son and I know what it is because we're going to be your teachers in this world. And a lot of people are showing up right where I am. Check it out. That's you guys, that is. Okay, see, that's actually a lot of you. So <laughs> press, press the W okay. key, and you can use your keypad to move you around. This is one of my favorite parts. Now I need to make this a little bigger. This is my favorite part. When everybody gets in the game and you're like, what is going on? So I'm going to um, turn on my creative mode. I'm going to fly above you for a minute. Look at how many of you are in here. There's actually a clump of you right there. So what I'm doing, because then we're going to read the signs in the game, I'm using my, my trackpad to turn. Oh, and it's playing music too. That's fun. Um, and then see those things on the wall? W-A-S-D, that's, that's your keys that cause you to move forward, backward, or sidestep. Okay? So now you guys are spreading out. Now, before you get too excited, some people are going to be like, and we're off, and they shoot down the blue road, right? Which is kind of awesome. Has anyone here ever played Minecraft before? Okay, so three of you are going to be like, I know what to do, run, 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 all right? So, but that's good, you know why? Because later, when people are freaking out, one of you three is going to go back and rescue them, okay? So you use your experts in your class to help out. I had, in that group of 11 kids, I had three boys and, um, nine, uh, three boys and eight girls, Two of the boys had played Minecraft before, but it was a couple years before when they were in middle school. And most of the class were, wow, that's louder than I needed to be. Most of the class were 10th graders, but I had one junior and two second semester seniors who were taking my class because they had to. That's always fun. That's another story. They did not like playing Minecraft, as it turns out. You know why? Because they were already thinking about what college they were going to, and they were checked out. Okay, so where we started, see that, that little checkerboard thing? That's the spawn. That just means where we start out when we go in the game. And at any point, if I need to, I can teleport everybody back to the spawn, I can teleport myself back to the spawn, or I could teleport other people there if I need to. Um, so when we started at the spawn, look, there were signs, welcome to Minecraft. Move the mouse to look around. Press W to walk forward. Welcome to Minecraft, move the mouse. Okay, so, and then pretty soon, you get the idea that blue is the way we're going, right? And there's Joe Cook, he works here. And there's Jerry, hi Jerry. And so look, it says follow the blue line. So then, see these? You can right click. Now here's what's tricky on a Mac. That's um, command click. Oh, no it isn't. <laughs> okay, let's hope that one wasn't important because I'm the only one who can destroy. <laughs> My son and I can destroy everything. Control You're right, it's control click. I play this a lot, trust me. Okay, but not recently. So this just show, tells you how to do this. I hope they all said the same thing and the one in the middle wasn't all the secrets. <laughs> oh look, hi, there used to be a thing here, okay. So now we're going to walkie walk, and it says Minecraft is about exploring. So sometimes it just tells you fun things. Look, giant instructions. Okay, do do do. Where's that? Did you did you already pass it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's let's walk. Let's follow. Look, these guys are already here. So before we get too far, I'm going to show you some things I can do and my son can do. I don't know where he is actually in the game right now. Um, what's your name in the game? Just Cameron. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment to show you what the teacher can do in this game. Now, by the way, when you put kids in a game, be prepared to be talking to yourself sometimes. Okay? But since you guys are all going crazy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, uh, oh, look, here's who's in the game. Cam, Brian Ellis, hi, Brian, Pez Pants, Joe Cook, Cassie, Jean, Jerry, Megan, Steve Angela, and Lucy Coleman. Okay. So let me freeze you all because I bet you're getting a little out of control. Check this out. Boom. I froze you. <laughs> I froze you just for a minute. So I know it's, and Roland, you are doing great. In a minute, I'm going to unfreeze you and we're all going to go explore. Yes. If you start to feel chilly. Yeah. You're not frozen. Are you? You're probably not frozen, Cameron. Okay, so this is my teacher dashboard where I was able to freeze you. If you were using the in-game chat, which I'll show you in a minute, I could also mute you, which means you just can't talk for a minute in the game. Sadly, that does not work in the room that you're sitting in. Like, you can mute them here, and they'll go, oh, yeah, yeah. You can still hear them. Yes? Um, even though we're frozen, we can still move around. And yeah, you can do this. <laughs> and you might even be able to do this, which is the um, shift key. Okay, so um, I just want to show you the dashboard. 
So I can teleport myself to the spawn. I've turned on creative mode for myself. What I like is that when I mouse over something, um, it tells me what that is. Spectate mode, otherwise known as creepy. Um, <laughs> but it is sometimes helpful because when you go to where the students are, sometimes what you want to observe is their collaboration and you don't want them to, you wouldn't necessarily be projecting, or you could be, because a lot of times they're so into it they don't even realize. Like clearly you're watching them and they're like, is that us on the screen, where are you? Right? <laughs> um, so spectate mode is fun, but generally I would tell the students if I'm in spectate mode, or I might just say, I'm in spectate mode, and I'm not, but then they, they think that I'm watching them really closely. But I can go to wherever they are anyway. So um, there's some different, uh, there's some different settings that you can have. The day and night cycle I have turned off because there is nothing more frustrating when you're trying to learn how to swim or jump over something than for it to get dark and then you freak. Like literally you might freak. I freaked the first time I was underwater in this game. Fire and TNT by default is switched off. You work with kids, they will blow stuff up. <laughs> but at some point you should enable it because you should see like how long it takes them to figure out how to blow stuff up. Like make it a reward. If you Look, are you over my head, Cameron? Someone is. That's you. I bet that's you. That's my son's feet. Um, yeah, there you go. That, there goes my kid. So there's all these different things. You can see what some of this is, and, and you don't need to necessarily know right now what those things are. Yeah, it's you. Um, so difficulty I have is peaceful. Nothing bad's going to happen to you, I promise. But you can change the difficulty if you want to. Um, and weather effects is fun, like it could start raining, but it's not going to because I have that turned off. Yeah, if you're in a cold place, it could start snowing. So right now I have you frozen. If I unfreeze you, will you still look up here? Or half, like will you one eye up here? Okay, so PVP is when they can, um, you, you can let them beat each other up. I don't recommend it for your first time out. Okay, I do allow students to surface and I do allow students to respawn. That means if they get stuck underground, they can go, I want to get back up to the earth you know, level. I don't allow students to build in this world until we get to the place where I want them to build. Okay, so I'm gonna unfreeze you, don't get crazy. Okay, here's where I can give whatever I want to whomever I want. So everybody's gonna get, not that you need them, but everybody's gonna get 10 torches. Boom, now you all have 10 torches. Um, I can give it to a specific player, which I think I just gave them to me. Yes, I did. So now I'm gonna give Cameron even more torches, although he doesn't really need them because um, he can give himself whatever he wants. Okay. So that's the give screen. Assignment means I can say, okay, now what I want you to do is this, and it's going to show up on their screen. And also anytime they press M, it'll, it'll show up there. This is where I can teleport people. So like, I don't know where Brian is, but he's not looking at me. So if I decide that, <laughs> because I know him, um, I want to teleport him here. Brian, I'm experimenting on you, sorry. Um, so that's Brian. Brian, you can walk away a little bit. Um, so there he goes, see? I teleported him back to me, which sometimes I need to do if a student is getting too far ahead or if I just want to, maybe, a lot of times kids will say, can you teleport me back to you? He has a creeper shirt on, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And he's swinging his torch. All right, so that's helpful. Or a student might say, I don't really know where I am, but you really need to see this. So I will teleport myself to the student, okay? And then, um, or I can teleport all the students here. There are stations within the game where we c I can say, okay, we're all gonna go to the lighthouse. I go there first and then I teleport all the kids to me. And then there's some build tools if I'm trying to build something quickly, I can use those. Also long distance building means like, if, if we were in Minecraft right now, I could build something over there that I normally would need to be next to to build. But that's just stuff for like later on down the road. So what we're gonna do is, I don't know if anybody's still back there, I'll peek around the wall. Hey guys, come on over here, who's that? So I can fly, you can't. Um, let's see, Steve Angela, yeah. Lucy Coleman. So, hey guys, follow me, okay? Hey Reeves, look at you. All right, come this way. <laughs> Press W, right. and then see the big instructions on the wall? That's your um, how to move. W is forward, oh. S is back, it's like literally walking can backwards. Can you reset those keys? Like you're just you those can, keys. you can, but I don't recommend it, only because if the kids play Minecraft, they already know that. That's, that's across the board. But that's an excellent question. You can customize. A, a is moving, like literally doing this. Oh, those are just the and then on the board. D is yeah. this one. And then S watch. is, yeah. It stood for something, sorry. No, it's cool. <laughs> and Cameron will demonstrate, okay. So, so all of you that are down here, you guys, come over here. Don't go up the stairs, come over here. Follow me this way. 
Well, first, right here we learn how to move around because if we can get there, we're going to collaboratively build something. Um, but we may not get there because we, we're kind of limited on time. In fact, in the next 18 minutes, it's not likely we're going to get there. So, so I'm going to I'm going to teleport you to me in a minute. You're following the blue road. So see how like this tells you along the way there are signs that tell you things like how to climb steps. If the steps are just regular steps that are made out of like steps, you just walk up them. So I'm just walking up the steps. But if they were bigger, blockier steps, I would need to jump up them. And I jump using my spacebar key. What's fun about this is as you start to go through, you go, oh, look, stuff can be made out of different stuff. Okay. And here's an info block. And it says, to the something. That's fun when you look up. Jeannie, do that again. Oh, wait, where'd you go? So, Jean, go like this again. Okay, give it a minute, son. Okay, so Brian keeps waiting for me. That's nice of you. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. Woo! Okay, so what we're going to do is just keep following the path. I'm going to get somewhere, and I'm going to teleport you guys to me. Yeah, so um, Roland got a good... Roland, who in the game is known as Reeves, he got a message, you cannot dig here because I have building turned off. <laughs> but if you whack on the ground, you're digging. Welcome to the training valley. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Guys, I'm going to bring you here. We're kind of accelerating this game quite a bit. Okay, is everybody ready? This will be fun, too, because I get to see how many of you there are now since you all came in and spread out. All right, so now you're a, a little clump of humanity. So walk towards this... Uh, Walk towards this building. Okay, so in, when we go in the obstacle course, is anybody there? It says, jump up the stairs. You need your space bar. Space, space. Now, great, jump down. You can't get hurt. It's okay. Did you create all these? No, this, was, this comes with Minecraft EDU, this tutorial world, which is a great place to start. And if, when in doubt, follow Brian. Okay, so then we climb up a ladder. <laughs> And then jump over this small gap. See where these like glowstones are? You do a little something like this. You guys got to hold the space bar down a long time. Yeah. Well, and then a running jump is a double W, a quadruple U. Okay, so you go, boom, wham, ooh. My handicap from never having played very many video games with my kids. And it's okay if you're like struggling because we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to tell you what happened the first time I did this. So you have to swim across. So at first, and actually I'm getting, I'm having a flashback. I, I forgot how to surface, which is just the space bar. When I was under the water, I had like a physical reaction to it. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I got to get out. And I'm stuck. I hate when that happens. So um, you hold down the space bar, you surface, you move forward. And it does take some time, okay? And then here the water's pushing against you and you have to like fight it. <laughs> okay. So see, and I'm not even doing that well. But seriously, I had a physical reaction. So two things. One, if you're like me, you're watching something happening on TV, and like when the guy's going to take his gun out, you're like, right? Do you do that? Do you go like, my husband watches soccer, and he's, <coughs> while he's watching it, it's really fun to watch. Um, so if you're that person, you, can be, you might be a little twitchy while you're playing, especially while you're getting used to it. Who said sitting around playing video games was not good exercise? The other thing is, is anybody feeling kind of left behind right now? I'm going to freeze you all again. I'm stuck in the little canyon. I'm, I'm there. My legs are too weak to jump in. Okay, I'm freezing you all. I hope nobody's underwater. Okay, I'm going to unfreeze you all. Get and I, what I'll do is I'll teleport you to me. Okay, so no one will be underwater anymore. Okay. So um, just... Just chill out there for a minute. Okay, everybody's here. I'm going to unfreeze you for a second. Or are you unfrozen? I can't remember. Okay, I'm going to unfreeze you, spread out, and then just chill out. Because I'm going to freeze you again. Everybody spread out a little bit. Spread out a little bit. Frozen again. Okay, the reason I'm freezing you is I want to have a conversation. We don't have a lot of time for this, but how do you feel in the game when you're, like, way behind and you want everybody to wait for you? What does that feel like? Frustrating. Panicked, right? Oh my gosh, they're going to get ahead. They're going to get to the thing that I have to be at and I'm not there yet. 
What else do you feel? Yeah, like, oh, she's, she's going to give directions, but I can't see what she's talking about, so. I'm stupid. <laughs> right, sometimes it feels that way, right? Are any of those things something we really need to worry about? Because let's face it, in a little while, we're going to close our laptops, and it's like it never happened, right? Don't our students go through the exact same thing all the time? You knew that was coming. Okay, so in the game, kids who may not be as successful in the, ac in the traditional academic setting may have an opportunity. Plus, if they keep at it, if they... In a, any game, you want to get better, you just keep playing, right? So they can be successful. And then you start slipping curriculum in, okay? Then you start, first of all, Brian came in with some prior knowledge. He, and there were three of you, right, who've played before. So you can go back and help. What if you're the kid everyone normally has to wait for, and we all have to slow down for, but in the game, you've been playing this. And you know, maybe that's the reason we always have to slow, slow down for you, because instead of doing homework, you're playing games. Who knows? <laughs> but maybe, maybe it's just that you play games because there you can be successful, right? So we're going to a place and saying to kids, there's nothing wrong with this. We're going to do this together. We're going to collaborate. We're going to cooperate. And then you give them a chance to have some social stuff get worked out, right? Which is really cool. So the, the kid with some prior knowledge can say, oh, you know what, I'll come back. And in fact, the two guys that knew how to play the game in my class, I kept hearing this one guy say, wait, Jackie, I'm coming back. I'll come back for you. And I, that had nothing to do with me. Now, granted, there were high schoolers. They should know that by then, right? But somebody would be like, oh, I can't find the thing. And then you'd start hearing, Mo, how do you? Vishal, show me how you, right? And so they became like celebrities almost in the class. So it gives an opportunity for a, not a level playing field, but a different playing field, a playing field where some people have success already. And so, and you know what? If you want to get good at it, you just go and you play some more. So um, I'm going to unfreeze you. There's a whole lot of stuff we can't necessarily get into, but I'm going to fly over something so that you can see it. This is a, there's like this whole entrance thing you got to get in, and then there's this, there's a maze. I have to find my way around again. Okay, uh, this place, you end up going in here, and then you have to figure out where the exit is. And when you do this with kids, somebody goes, hey, guys, guys, I found it. I found it. Okay, you have to walk past that pond, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but wait, there's a switch. I don't know how to do this. And then they figure it out together, right? So they, get, they finally get out of the exit. There's this maze over here, which in the first iteration, I don't remember it having color. But if I'm a kid and I figured it out, what can I tell the kids? Take the brown and then take the orange and then take the yellow, right? But maybe I've spent 20 minutes while everybody else was figuring out how to move around, figuring that out. Now I'm everybody's hero, right? And then we get in here and we go actually go underground into this thing where we learn how to, well, let me in another way. I might have to go in this way. Uh, we learn how to build. We learn that different tools are used for different things. Dirt and sand, you use a shovel. Stone and granite, you use a pickaxe, okay? And that's just like learning the tools of the trade and figuring out what the right thing is for that. Because then you get all these materials. Okay, I'm just kind of showing you up here. Did I go in the wrong way? Yes, I did. Okay, so I'm going to. There's this place with all these materials. I kind of went in the, the opposite way. You come in, you learn how to use them. You have to build steps to get up to those doors to get out to the exit. Okay? It works better in teams than alone. Two people working together can build the steps a lot more quickly than one person working alone. Sometimes it's fun to just let the kids figure that one out for themselves. Then, once they get out, I put them in teams. Okay, after they learn how to build, I put them in teams and they have to go to, I'm trying to remember. Are you ready for a real challenge? They come down here, which has a glass roof, and sometimes it's just fun to like let them see, like, that's pretty cool. They're going in there. They go down here, and I've already assigned them to teams, and I have not put them with their friends. I've split those partnerships up. And I say, now in the class that I had, I had 11 kids, so I was able to say, okay, team A, you guys have areas one and two. Team B, you have areas three and four. In the even-numbered area, you're going to build models of these structures, okay? So, of course, what does team A do? They run in here and they start bashing these down. And then I said, what are you guys doing? You have to build replicas of those. And they're like, oh. 
but they had gotten ahead, right? So sometimes getting ahead is not good because you don't know what to do next. So what they do is there's chests at the back, okay? These chests have tools in them, and this is sand and soil and gravel and cobblestone, and they use those different tools that I mentioned, and then on these places where, it's, where um, the green circles are, that means they can build there. So they have to build a column of sand in the center, three blocks high. What you find out is that you can't build some of these things without building something and then breaking it down because you had to build something to stand on it to build the other thing. And then gravel and cobblestone look very similar. That's gravel. That's cobblestone. Some of these use both. They have to pay close attention to detail because I'll make them break it down and, and rebuild it again. But they're in teams. So then you start to hear, you don't tell them how to be a team. You start to hear, all right, you do all the sand ones. I'm going to do all the soil ones. Okay, you dig, you bring all that stuff over here and then just bring it a pile over here. You're gonna save us some time. It d I never said it was a race, but kids make it a race. So they'll figure out how to do it fastest. So things are happening, and then once you've done this, like going on a corporate team building exercise, because then when you get done, we do a little tour, we look at each other's stuff, right? And it actually, it took us a couple of classes to do this. I took video of the whole thing, so then I've got I just screencasted what I, what I was doing. I've got things where I can go back and say, oh, look, Sonali's breaking that part down and rebuilding it because she realized she was using the wrong material. And I can just talk about habits of persistence or whatever else that I want. Okay? So then once they come out, they change this in this version. There used to be no torches in here. You had to figure it out. But I know the way. It used to be way darker. And so I, have to, I would have to give the kids torches. We're in a tunnel, and you have to kind of go around the walls. Once they get out, then they get to go out into this, um, they call it like a campground area. I'm just going to get out and go there. See where the flags are? Those are supposed to be flags. See all these cabins? What was really funny is I had night and day turned on. It was night when we got out here, and the guys were like, all right. And I just said, okay, we're going to start here, and then we're going to save in a few minutes. And the guys were like, okay, this is the boys' cabin. Hey, what are you doing in the boys' cabin? You're, you're a girl. Don't <laughs> and I was like, y you know, you're going a fourth period in a minute, right? You do know, like, this isn't real. They're like, that's okay. <laughs> and then they were like, you know what? It's bunk beds. It's okay if the girls come in if you stay on that side. It was really funny. Um, <laughs> so then what we did in, in the one, I'm trying to remember the spot. One of these spaces, this space here, see where there's, like, picnic tables? Oh, hello, Cam. We had, a, we had a project where each kid had to teach the rest of us how to do something in Minecraft. So they had to learn how to do it, tell us what materials were needed, how do I get those materials, how do I do it, all the steps, and then why would I even need to do this? So one kid taught us how to farm. Another kid taught us how to build a crafting table so that you could make things. Um, and then and a crafting table is used to make more things. That's a crafting table right there, actually. That's two of them. So in this space, when it was your turn to teach, you got up on a table and you showed us what you, knew, what you learned how to do. Um, and then in that area over there, that grassy area, I started putting dispensers for different things that they might need to teach. Um, these, I think, are dispensers, too. Oh, those are furnaces. So we just kept having more lessons in here and, and being in the world. And, and it wasn't really for a specific curricular reason, although I was making parallels to certain things in computer science. So I was using it for something. And then we actually wrote about gaming and education and what their feelings were about how that went. Um, but then from here, I let them build, and we, Cameron's in that cabin right there, you can see him. Um, I let them kind of do some different things, and it, it ended up being really fun for me and most of the kids. What I'm wondering from you is, because we only have three minutes left, what would you do? If you could teach in this world or if you could bring your kids in, what would you do? What I would recommend is you go to that Minecraft Teachers Google group and you start asking people, does anybody here teach earth science? What are some ways you're showing this, that, and the other thing? Because there's a lot of mods for a lot of things. So there, there are ways that you could go and find stuff that relates to your curriculum. And then also, OK, guys, how would you do that? I have no clue. That's how I learned everything that I know. And I really don't know very much, to be honest. I know very little about this. Um, and then there's like, you know, uh, the, have your kids build the setting of the novel and, and put the characters in there and interact with them. Or maybe the kids become the characters. And then you invite guests in to your world and interact with them. And then the kids interact with them the way the character would um, to, to kind of put themselves in the character's position. We are actually out of time. But I, let you, I got you in here so that you could play with it. This tutorial world will stop being here when I turn off my computer. But that um, Harker server that you saw at the beginning, if you're at home and you're on the internet, you can go in. And if you forget how, 
email me and I'll give you some steps. And then you can go and check out the wonderful world of humanities and you can just be in there and interact with them. And um, clearly that's something someone else has put a ton of work into, but there's a lot of stuff already out there. You wouldn't necessarily have to start from scratch. Or you could get a couple of your rock star kids to, to build some stuff. Remind you that you can get back to this and then there's other resources. And as I get more stuff, more information, I just add it to this site. So you'll, you may come back in six months and there's a whole, whole bunch more stuff. Um, you can always contact me about uh, contacting us, has information about how to contact me. You'll see information later about John Miller and Chris Scott as well. But you can always find us in the Google, um, the Google group Minecraft Teachers and online, Twitter, all those different things. We are out of time. I could spend another couple hours with you guys. You're awesome. But thank you. Yes, it's a, it's a taste of it. <laughs>